And now it's my pleasure to offer hospitality to a man who hasn't entirely wasted his life, singer, songwriter, author, film producer, keen gardener, and master of understatement. He once said, if you're going to be in a rock and roll band, you may as well be in the Beatles. Ladies and gentlemen, George Harrison. George, it's good to see you. You're back in the charts, so you're a happy man. Ah, I don't know if I'm back. I've, I've been back, but I, I don't know if I'm back this week. But um, I am a happy man. Yeah. Did you feel the time was right to, to do this? Yeah. Well, I didn't really think about it. I just felt um, time to make a record. And uh, so I made it. And, um, you know, sometimes things go right and sometimes they don't. This time it went right. You're attracting new fans, some of whom perhaps have... Never heard of the Beatles? I think most of them haven't. <laughs> yeah. I met a few people um, uh, just at Christmas. I saw some kids in uh, about 18 year old in Los Angeles and they saw me walk in a shop and they, they looked at each other and said, Oh, there's that singer. Which I thought was pretty good. Just that singer. <laughs> just that singer, you know. Yeah. You have kept yourself to yourself uh, in, in recent years. This led to some wild stories about the, the Howard Hughes of Henley. That's right, yeah. Well, it's the silly newspapers. I mean, they're not all silly, of course, but some of them are very silly. And uh, because I, d I don't go discotheking and things like that where people um, hang out with their cameras, so they presumed that I was uh, Howard Hughes with my big fingernails and Kleenex tissues and that kind of stuff. Bottles of urine all around the house. And, uh, <laughs> but I wasn't like that at all. I go out all the time, or a lot of the time, see friends, have dinner, go to parties. Sounds all right. I'm even more normal than, you know, normal people. <laughs> you, I mentioned gardening, you haven't yet, but uh, to stroll from one end of yours would take about three weeks, wouldn't it? How big is Not it Not really, no. My garden, you can stroll around it in ten minutes if you're power walking, which is <laughs> what I sort of do these days. So what have you got? If you saunter, it could take half an hour. If you swagger, maybe 45 minutes. <laughs> You've got legs as well, haven't you? Legs, yeah. I've got legs <laughs> and arms and... This is why it's southern accent. You've got lakes. <laughs> lakes, well, yeah. there's a bit of water, yeah. There's a sort of flows around that uh, was built in the Victorian days. It's very nice. It was all covered in soil and broken lavatories from a building <laughs> site when I bought it. it was well, all Howard Hughes did have it then, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about your son, who is now nine, I think? Is he aware of your glorious past? He's become aware now of the last few years, and um, I didn't really tell him anything about the Beatles because it was so long ago anyway. I didn't want to burden him with all that. But um, nevertheless, I think most kids, when they get to about four or five, they see Yellow Submarine. And uh, then he sort of twigged, and then he came up to me one day and said, Hey, Dad, how do you play the piano lick from A hey Bulldog? Which I thought, oh, that's strange. How does he know a song like that? But it's in Yellow Submarine. And was he impressed? No. <laughs> <laughs> Has he actually seen you perform? <clears throat> well, if you call it perform... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he came to the... Um, I did this show, The Prince's Trust, last July. He came to that show. And I suppose you could call it performing. But uh, after the show, I said to him, well, what did you think? And he said, oh, was, yeah, you were OK, Dad. Why didn't you do rock and roll music and Sweet Little Sixteen, Johnny Be Good? I said, well, actually, that's Chuck Berry. <laughs> and he's nine? Nine and a half now, yeah. Oh, that's better. He's really half. into Chuck Berry, though, as uh, you are, too. I saw you on the show with him. Yes, didn't have long enough, I'm afraid, but it was a great guy. How long, uh, when you did The Princess Trust, how long had it been since you had done a live show? Uh, last time, well, I did one show which um, I happened to, this, I wore this suit for it. It's the first time I've worn it since the Carl Perkins show, which was uh, a televised program for HBO. Before that, I, I did a tour in America in 1974. But in England, I never performed since The Beatles, which was 1965 or something like that, 66 so you, maybe. 
You could have been very slightly terrified. I was, yeah. It felt like I was going to the electric chair. <laughs> Sat there for hours waiting to go on. And uh, very, very nervous. But surrounded by old mates. Fortunately, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of um, support from the gang, Ringo and, uh, well, Phil Collins was playing one night, and uh, Eric Clapton, of course, and Elton, and Midjure, a lot of people. Didn't someone suggest that you should get a sort of oldies group together? I think uh, that's sort of an idea that's bubbling about, uh, mm. maybe in Elton's mind, I don't know. It's sort of a good idea because everybody enjoys playing together. Could call yourselves Methuselah. Be good. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Or not, as the text may be. <laughs> Amazingly, 25 years since Beatlemania swept the world. When did you first realise it was happening to you? The mania side of it happened. Uh, it started happening in, I think, 1963, when we started touring seriously in England, like on the big um, Moss Empire circuit. And then we did some tours around Europe, and I think it was because of the mania that was happening then that the Americans caught on and came over, and they did features on us in Time and um, Life and Newsweek. So then that sort of set us up for the, the trip to um, the USA in 1964. And when did the excitement wear off? <laughs> Well, it sort of wears off and it comes back again. Like, just recently, I feel quite excited to be alive, regardless of whether I'm making a record or promoting my record by my album now, right? <laughs> um, you know, quite apart from that. But I think, for me, the mania got to me in uh, 1966, and uh, around that time, I got a bit tired of what they call the adulation. I'm still not that keen on that side of it. I, it's nice to be popular, it's nice to be loved, but it's, um, it's not so nice to be chased around and on the front page of the paper every day of your life with you know people climbing over the wall all mm. day long. And the endless round, of course, of meeting people, dignitaries, etc. Yes, well, we did tend to meet most of the uh, dignitaries of the world. Yes, so were you bored by all that? Well, sometimes it was boring, sometimes we just make fun of them, or you but, yeah. have our own little in-jokes, you know, to get yeah. through. We noticed that. I mean, you, you, you did send them up. I mean, looking back, do you think that you were cheeky, so-and-so's, cocky? Oh, we were very cheeky, yeah. We had to be, really. It's uh, like a, you know, survival kind of thing. Your current single harks back to those uh, early days. Are you feeling, apart from being glad to be alive, you feeling... Nostalgic. Nostalgic. Uh, not really, no. Uh, I do like, um... Uh, most people, I like uh, like the rock and roll years when you see what happened when Cuba attacked Russia and all that, whatever happened, and you remember that uh, Eddie Cochran was singing this tune. I like nostalgia in that respect, and I suppose um, all that 20 years ago today stuff that was happening last year, you know, it's nice to be reminded of things that happened, except it reminds you how old you are. <laughs> Which is not so good. Well, let, let's see the video when we was fab with, as you say, more than a hint of Sergeant Pepper there. Back then, long time ago, when grass was green, woke up in a daze, arrived like strangers.
The microscopes that magnified the tears Studied bones and arms Still alive That was made with a little help from your friends, of course, including yeah. the one, the only, Ringo Starr. <laughs> I've met you before. <laughs> Good evening. Dead. <laughs> oh. How you doing, Michael? A sharp suit, Ringo. I hate gardening. That's <laughs> <laughs> question number I love him, but I hate gardening. Right. You've been doing your own thing as well, of course, but you enjoy a bit Sorry? of the old nostalgia, don't you? <laughs> oh, I love nostalgia. I think I was nostalgic at birth. <laughs> That's why you got born again. <laughs> Just my <laughs> spotting <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought, didn't I spot the Sergeant didn't Pepper? Didn't we meet on a summer cruise? Yeah. I did spot the Sergeant Pepper costume in that uh, video, didn't That's I? That's right, yeah. A quick one. I had a quick one. Yeah. The actual original. The yeah. original suit, it's uh, a bit tight around the uh, hips it now is. at this moment. Have you kept memorabilia? I keep everything. <laughs> no, I do. I'm a hoarder. And, uh, you know, I, I've saved all my clothes through the years. And I thought, you know, it always goes round. The kids would love this. But the only time they ask me for any clothes is if there's a fancy dress party. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they have all the hippie stuff on. Hey, we're going to a fancy dress party, let's ask Dad. Would you do me a tremendous favour? I'm not going to kiss you like Lizzie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to rub your knees like the other guy. <laughs> would you... would you... <laughs> would you take the shades off for a second? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> These lovely orbs and oh, he's got the bluest eyes in the world. But they're closed. Oh yeah. Well, you have to keep them closed. The air gets at them. <laughs> <laughs> now, what you haven't kept, of course, the fans have. Were they always desperate for souvenirs? Uh, well, we. I think we were real lucky. I think the only thing I ever lost in all those days of madnesses was uh, half oh. of my scalp, uh, a shirt, and a gold uh, necklace, which they gave me back in New York. We really weren't beat up too much. Wales was the worst place I ever went. <laughs> what were they after? They were after my head. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, we had all these policemen, you know, and we'd walk down this, like, corridor of policemen, and some hand just came through and just grabbed my head. And this child I, I would have died. I don't remember Wales. It's before you joined the group. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, Rory Storm more. and the Hurricanes. No, it was you, Georgie. <laughs> but you were so much younger then. Ah. Uh, what did they, what that did they nick of yours then, George? What they nick of mine? Mm. Uh, somebody once broke in my house and nicked a pair of silk pyjamas. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> You've all four, of course, had your own special followers. How different was a Ringo fan from a George fan, say? I had the mothers. <laughs> I had the mothers and the children, always have. George has the mystics, John had the, you know... The, uh, intellectual. The intellectual college uh, attitude. And uh, Paul? And Paul had uh, the teenies. <laughs> that shared out the human race quite well, really. Well, that, I feel, was part of our um, strength, where we were a band that were appealing to children, to grandparents, you know, like the Stones, where they were mainly on a teenage 
attitude. Mm. You were... How you doing, Mick? You were always the, uh, the down-to-earth one. That's right. But what did you... Uh... God, you're looking chubby. Thank you. <laughs> what no, did you... No, no. Uh, oh, sorry, I've got what to behave. You... George is on. <laughs> <laughs> what did you make of... I was saying about you being down-to-earth. What did you make of the Indian episode? Well, the Indian episode uh, was really interesting. Uh, I got two phone calls, one from George and uh, one from John. It's, we're going to Wales. See, he's always been to Wales. He doesn't remember to meet the Maharishi, so I just got on the train because these guys wouldn't lie to me. So we met him in Wales, and then we all decided to go to this ashram in India. I think that I still uh, thank Maharishi, you know, for what he said, but in the end, I felt he was telling me stories, but that's my problem. In the end, I but mean, how long did you actually stick that course? Ten days. <laughs> <laughs> he ran out of beans. Yeah. Uh, he came, uh, to get to yeah, he came all, all the way up the Himalayas with a big ca suitcase cans of beans. Of beans. And a suitcase of clothes. Wow. And, and I he was didn't, a bit... didn't like flies and spiders. No, can't stand them. But uh, the interesting part was, you see, I can only eat bland food because I was very sick as a child. And uh, so I'd have me beans, and then I was getting fed up with that. And so the, I said, have you got any eggs? <laughs> <laughs> I got any eggs in the morning, you know. And so I caught these guys burying the shells in the ground as if God wouldn't notice. <laughs> so I decided to leave after that. <laughs> oh, no, he doesn't see those. You lived in each other's pockets, didn't you? I mean, it was like being a family. Oh, he's always lived in mine. But you have family rows. I mean, what... Yeah, main... we do. We have terrible rows. What was the main cause of your squabbles in the early days? Oh, I don't remember I'll leave that ever one up having to you, George. any. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I don't remember any squabbles. You don't remember anything, do you? No. <laughs> Instant amnesia. <laughs> what about now? What makes you cross with each other now? Well, the last time we were cross was when George was suing me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, me up. See, that, what's nice though? He calls me up. Cross. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's still cross. Uh, the last time he calls me, he'll say, "I'm going to sue you." I said, no, George, don't be so dumb. No, I'm going to see you. I don't like what you've done. Because he wrote this song, and I had it mixed by somebody else. <laughs> and uh, he didn't like the mix, <laughs> so he was going to sue me. <laughs> so in the end, I, have to, I said, sue me if you want, but I'll always love you. Uh, <laughs> Speaking uh, of which, you two shared a flat, didn't you? Yes, we did. Yes, we shared a flat. Uh, it's on the M M1, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, well, Wadden House. Yeah, I had I'll, to get the jack out and... Yeah. Yeah, it was fabulous. Shared. Well, we shared a couple of places, actually. You know, when we first came down to London, you know, you're so insecure that we had to live together. You know, we weren't big boys and we'd, oh, I'll have my own place. I never left home. Who's going to make the tea and iron your shirts? <laughs> George, what was he like to live with? Fabulous. Fabulous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we only ever I slept there anyway. There. We used to always be in the nightclubs, really, in yeah. those days. George, you... you know all his lines about I was never at a discotheque. Well, I wasn't. You had to drag him out of them, you know. Really. <laughs> well, that was back in 64. Oh, no. Yeah, before 65. the live. Yeah. Mm. No, I stopped going to him around 1967, I think. Yeah, I stopped in 1980. <laughs> <laughs> Got married, you... have yeah. a wonderful wife, you know. But then you rarely go to bed anyway, to sleep. I never you? go to bed. Yeah. I, I'm an insomniac, main, mainly. Mm. <laughs> when I'm not an insomniac, I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would cure it, I suppose. The, um, let me set the record straight, though, about... This is George. This, he's a drummer. He's a drummer. I he's can't a drummer. Know. It happens all the time. Am I making a noise on the mic? I tap all the time the... Ah. to yeah. my heartbeat. That's... Oh. Well, it's getting slower. I better tell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I can't wait for the coffin. Boom. Boom. <laughs> I hesitate, Ready, Lord. I hesitate to ask you a serious question, but, I mean, as we're talking well, why about... why don't you, Michael? I will. <laughs> Set the record straight about today's situation. The press are keen to imply rifts. How do you what and rift? Paul get on? Uh, we get on very well. George? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, we do, actually, we, uh, fact, I mean... We love you. Yeah. Which camera is it, for Christ? It gets bobbing around. Edit. For, um... Even. Yeah, <laughs> for about ten years, I didn't really... Ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really know Paul, yeah. and uh, never really saw much of him through the last ten or twelve years. But more recently, we've been hanging out and getting to know each other, going for dinner and meeting and having a laugh. And, and um, 
And it's absolutely not true what they said in the News of the World last Sunday. Which Have you got a... Somebody, actually, I was in San Remo the day before Paul arrived, oh, and I got a phone call from the, somebody, <laughs> the Daily Mail phoned up, and they said, uh, George, uh, you know, I said, no, sorry, George has just left. And I pretended it was, I was somebody else, and they said, well, there's some people down here who are trying to get this rumor started about you and Paul. So I told him, you know, that we weren't, uh, the reason why we weren't there together was because we didn't even know each other was going to be there anyway, and we all learned different days. But it's definitely just one of those things that these people sit around and think, let's have a fight between, you know, George and Paul now, you know. But actually, I love Paul, he's my mate, and it doesn't matter what they say in the papers, it's not going to, you know, they're not going to get much uh, mileage out of that one. What about Yoko? I don't know. Yoko, I'm pleased to say, which, where are they? Oh. Pleased to say. <laughs> <laughs> pleased to say that I had a great time with Yoko in New York yeah, on the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> and it was nice to meet her. <laughs> And off, you know. fine, yeah, everything's fine. <laughs> when uh, I and the rest of us hear, uh, hear Lennon records, it's still, of course, impossible for us to believe that he's gone. It must be, of course, a million times more for you, mustn't it? Well, you've certainly brought the party down, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> it is, I, you know. I was stunned on the day, and I still... Shocked I, and stunned. Uh, I mean, Shocked I, I and cry stunned. easy, and... Uh, I mean, just the other day, just because we're all sitting here, George and I watched this movie that Yoko was making about John. And I just get emotional. Oh, don't tell me, don't tell me. <laughs> no, I do, I get emotional, so. Like George I now. Do, I still miss the man. I love the man, I was close to the man. And um, he went out just in such a stupid way, you know. How did you hear And the, the guy's news? famous now, for God's sake. Yes, you know? that's the... What do you think of that? <laughs> that's the cruel irony, yeah, of course, you're quite right. Stupid. How did you hear the news yourself? Well, I heard it. We were in the Bahamas at the time, and uh, my stepdaughter, Francesca, called her, Barbara's daughter, and she said, oh, some kind of news about uh, John. I said, well, what is it? Like, the shooting and things like that. Well, you know, we don't know what it is, you know, I didn't really... I never ever went to, like, good night. And then they called back, you know, and they said, yeah, he's uh, actually even blown away. So we sat around and just devastated, actually. I mean, I was just down. And so, uh, five o'clock in the morning, I ordered a plane and flew to New York just to see if there was anything, you know, you can do, but you can't, but you just, you know, when you get to that position or uh, situation, you know, you just do something, and that's what Barbara and I did, we, because you couldn't have a holiday after that, you know? Mm. Yeah. So, and George, how did you hear it? Yeah, I was in bed at the time in England, and uh, I don't know, the call came through sometime in the morning, four or five in the morning. I didn't take the call. Um, Olivia took the call and she said, John's been shot. And I thought, oh, how bad is it? You know, I just thought maybe a flesh wound or something like that. But uh, they said, no, that's it, he's dead. So I didn't know, I just went back to sleep, actually. I just, uh, maybe it's just a way of um, getting away from it. I just went to sleep and, uh, and then waited to see, you know, what it said the next morning. And he was still dead the next morning, unfortunately. Oh. But, uh, you know, I, I feel um, not so bad about it in as much as, uh, you know, I had this, you know, unlike Ringo, when I went to Rishikesh in India, I went into meditation and I had some good experiences and I got to... I had some good ex experiences. I know you did and you forgot <laughs> to tell them. Well, yeah, but you only asked about the eggs. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> I believe what it says in... Uh, in the scriptures and in the Bhagavad Gita, it says there was never a time when you didn't exist and there'll never be a time when you cease to exist. The only thing that changes is our bodily condition. Soul comes in the body and we go from birth to death. And it's death, how I look at it, is like taking your suit off. Mm. You know, the soul is in these three bodies and one body falls off. And uh, I feel like that. I can feel him around here. Oh, and, I've seen uh, him twice. He's Did still... he feel that? No, oh, yeah. You've, you've seen oh, him? Oh, yeah. I felt uh, one time very strong that uh, I was in a hotel room in L.A. And uh, I was real down, miserable, whatever was going on. He was in the corner saying, what are you doing? So I'm being miserable. I said, well, come on, get it together. No, I believe, like George, on that respect, though, we just did the joke a bit about the eggs, that uh, we do continue. And I do believe in God. <laughs> 
Did he? How, what I mental knew. state was, was John in at that time? Do you, do you know? We well, I, I'd never seen him for a couple of years before that, but um, I had enough experience. Well, we all did. During the 60s, we had, um, you know, there was people putting stuff in our coffee, which gave us some crazy experiences. And uh, when they stopped doing it, we started putting it in our own coffee for There's a bit. two girls wondering what they put in your coffee over there. And, uh, you know, but, um, you know, we had a lot of experiences. I know John was, um, you know, he knew who he was, that he was a soul that happened to be in this body for this period of time. And, uh, you know, I don't think... Uh, it's just the method by which you die, you know. I mean, I think it's nicer if you can consciously leave your body at death as opposed to just some lunatic shooting you on the street or having a plane crash, something like that. I think it's unfortunate the way he went out. Mm. But it doesn't really matter. He's OK, and life flows on within you and without you. How are you doing, Johnny? Mm. Would anything... Over to you, Michael. Well, I was going to ask, would anything have persuaded you to uh, all, that is, to reform the Beatles even for one night? And what kind of offers did you get anyway? Well, I think the only time we phoned each other up, because <laughs> everyone kept trying to get us together, but uh, somebody phoned up and they offered us uh, just for one, one gig, and we only used to do 25 minutes. <laughs> they offered us uh, 50 million <laughs> dollars, was it? Uh, well, Lira. Could have been in anything. <laughs> 25 quid each. <laughs> and I just, I do remember, but uh, George never called any, but I remember calling everyone else and them called me saying, well, well what do you think? Uh, you know, 25 minutes, buy your new suit. <laughs> so what's, what, what stopped you then? We will never get it together. And I mean, we broke up, you know, for all the reasons we know about. I mean, you know, to get together. I don't really believe in, like, this getting together thing, really. Now, if we got together, it would be George, Paul and Ringo if we got together. It would not be the Beatles, you know. We'll never do it with Julian because it'll be them be George, Paul, Ju uh, what's my name? <laughs> and Julian. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, you would never go out there again with that. Well, I won't. I don't know about Georgie. Hmm. Would you go out, Georgie, with that name? Uh, no, it, we couldn't, it wouldn't be the Beatles. But, yeah. but the thing is, it's not to say that, uh, you know, I mean, Ring and I hang out occasionally and play some tunes together. I'm on the album. He's on the album, <laughs> he was on the concert, and Paul does concerts. And as I say, we're getting to be uh, friendlier with Paul. It's a um, good chance someday maybe we'll write a tune and play together, but it won't be the Beatles. And if people expect us to be the Beatles, they're going to be disappointed. But mm. you may see three old guys called... John, Paul and Ringo, who someday may sing a song together. <laughs> I bet I don't get to sing. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but you have other things to offer. I mean, look at Oh, here. yes, Michael, you're telling yes. them now. <laughs> what about acting? Now, you've... Uh, acting. You've done... Couldn't acting. get a job if I died. <laughs> you've always been a film fan, haven't you? I love films. Mm. I love cameras, as you may have noticed. <laughs> You've got a lot of new fans, though, with uh, Thomas the Tank Engine. Oh, I have. It's great. <laughs> it's great. It is fabulous with Thomas. I never knew it would be so big. In fact, the first time Britt Allcroft, who was the producer of all this, came up, saying, you know, I'd like you to read these stories about this train, which I never had, because I was a Beano man. <laughs> and uh, I said, you've got to be crazy. It's Star Wars and Madison. We were talking years ago, anyway. And so she came back and convinced me. So I said, look, I'll just read five of the stories on my own, on tape, and you listen to them and see if you still want me. And she did. And then we did Thomas the Trainers, all these little babies screaming again. Ringo, Ringo! <laughs> <laughs> I used to have the mother's oh, now. I've got the kids <laughs> You are, of course, the, the poorest Beatle, I am the you? poorest Beatle, Michael. <laughs> You're right. That's why I'm on the show. That <laughs> <laughs> won't do much for your last... Well, you're down to your last 20 million now, I think, aren't you? No, you... I didn't even make the, uh, the list, and Georgie's got 14, so I'm down to, what, 12. <laughs> are you a great spender, though? I mean, you, yeah, you enjoy it. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> yeah. I love to spend. That's the only reason to have it. <laughs> What's the biggest waste of money you can claim to have done? Biggest waste? Well, the biggest... I mean, if you call this, uh, like, some reality, Apple. that's all waste. What? Apple. Well, that was all <laughs> of us. I can't blame me for that person. <laughs> if it had all never happened, what would you be doing now? I'd be a drummer. <laughs> well, would... well, what's funny about that? <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I decided when I was 18, this is my life. 
So, you know, just because we made it, uh, you know, didn't, I don't think, I mean, you're asking a weird question because we don't know what would have happened if it hadn't That's happened. All conjecture. But I just feel that I still would have been playing behind the strippers. <laughs> or in front these days. <laughs> I think I probably would have been a guitar, uh, probably a better guitar player than I am now because, Impossible. you know, because, uh, you know, the famous bit sort of made we ended up just playing the same old stuff for years. But um, I started playing the guitar when I was about 13 and that's the only thing I really wanted to do. I didn't want to be a, a Thomas the Tank Engine or... Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> or a train, you know, a oh, fireman or anything like that. Would you have been happier men oh. if, if it had not occurred? I always feel I was born happy. So happiness? I don't, you know, happy. You know, I'm basically happy. Yeah. I am happy. And George, you certainly are. I'm quite you happy, yeah. I'm <laughs> happy. <laughs> but you can't say, you know, it's all, this is our lives, you know. This is the only life I can remember. And uh, I'm happy enough doing it. It's been up and down and good and bad. And uh, in the end, I think I come, all of us have come out of it reasonably sane and quite happy. Well, the rest of us are happy, and for all of us, it's been fab. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. Ringo Starr and, and George, George Harrison. Harrison. Thank you. And thanks for your company. See you next week. Good night.